Hi, this is Lady and the Violin, and today I will be sharing with you a very helpful drill that I have implemented into my everyday practice in order to learn how to play without my fingerboard guide. This I consider this drill a tetra drill because you use all four fingers on each string. This is a very simple drill that and it's also a warm-up. It's a warm-up for your left hand and for your right hand bowing. The reason why I went ahead and started practicing my tetra drills is because when I got a separate violin from my original one, which is this one, I that one did not have a fingerboard guide and I started playing it and I realized I couldn't hit the notes correctly. I basically learned how to play the violin uh, by always looking at the fingerboard guide and just placing my fingers there. I did not create that muscle memory that most professional violins have when hitting those correct notes. All you do is do four fingers on each string and when you play all your, like for example if you play on the A string you're going to play B, C sharp, uh, D, and E. I do various bow um, strokes. I first do it with the long slow bow. Then I use the twinkle variations from Suzuki Book 1 and I use that so that for every um, finger that I put down if it's not right on key I can go ahead and adjust it and find the right key using my tuner. So the tuner I use, it's a free um, app that I downloaded through my Google Play Store and it's this one. Now, I'm not sure what this one is called, but it's by Music Society, and this has been the most useful tuner I have found, and that's absolutely free. It's good for tuning your, your open strings, but it's good for checking on all your fingers that they're hitting the right note. So, for example, if I play the D string, it's... See, it hits right there, but... The goal is to for the arrow to land in the center, so I probably need to tune my violin. If you hit the note in the white area, you're close enough and you can go on. But the closer to the center you hit, the better. So I try to try to get it as close as possible. I'm going to start with the, on the A string and uh, using st straight, just straight slow bows. Let me move my stand, it's kind of in the way. So here it goes. Mississippi hot dog variation. Okay, so the next variation is bop 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 bop. So let's do that. Okay, next variation is bop 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 bop. Okay, I needed to um, practice on my bowing on that one, 
But I'm going to move on to the next variation, which is um, so I think it's eight, eight, eight notes, oh, eight, eighth notes. So here we go. two quarter notes so it's ba 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 so here we go so that was the exercise um, and you repeat all of those variations on each string, same uh, finger placements. Now eventually you want to, uh, what I'm going to do eventually is I'm going to just do the same thing, but practicing the natural notes. So instead of, instead of C sharp, move it up to C natural. I think that's C natural. That's the C. There you go. So I would be like this. So eventually I'm going to go ahead and practice those because I'm having trouble with those. Um, even with the fingerboard guide, I, I can't, um, I'm having trouble keeping the middle finger close to my index finger and hitting that natural note um, on key. Uh, but um, this, I'm going to use this exercise to train my middle finger to hit those natural notes more easily. And um, so those were my Tetra drills, and I hope um, these drills will help you as much as they have for me, and it, they serve as a really good warm-up to your practice. Um, after the tetra drills, I usually do um, just simple um, scales on each string. I do a, a, an octave on uh, A, an octave on um, D, and two octaves, the two octave G um, scale. So that's about it for today. I hope this has been helpful, and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.